Hey guys, RC here. It's episode 35 of our Play the Kids Youth Challenge. Got a couple of questions to answer for you guys today. And we are entering the FA Cup to see if we can make us some money this year. So let's roll the intro and get into it. Please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. That'll keep you up to date when videos do go live. Uh, and let's get into things. So since last episode, which was the 3-1 loss to Luton, uh, we beat Alfreton 2-1. Goals from Macaulay Ellis in the midfield and Graham Williams with a penalty to get the game winner. And against top of the table, Bolton, a 3-3 draw. Anthony Carmichael scored in stoppage time. Unfortunately, he was hurt in this match. He's got nine assists in 11 games, uh, tearing it up again on the assist side of things. Tony Doyle came off the bench up top and scored a brace for us there. Uh, taking a look at some of the questions that I had, Dominic Barstow a couple of days ago. Dom, appreciate the question. Uh, saw Lincoln was in the premiere and I was so confused until I remembered you're in a plus 30. Where are Geisley and Elgin? All right, Geisley, I recognize the name of the club because Leeds played them in a friendly this year. Pretty much play them every year from what I understand. They are first in the Vonorama National League North. So there you go. Let's take a look at the competitions. So yeah, 10 wins, 2 draws, 4 losses out of 16 games. That's not bad. Currently 1 point up on Chelmsford. And let's see. Stages. We go back. So 3rd, 7th, 17th. They won the league that year. How did they not get promoted? Are they not allowed to get promoted or something? I, I'm just curious. So they, they won the league going away, but then they were still in the north the next year? Interesting. All right. And the other club was... Elgin or Elgin? Uh, yeah, well, I'm assuming Elgin City, Scottish League 2. I hope that's right. Now, the Scottish League, I don't have added in. Uh, so they are in that league. Semi professional. And if it's Elgin Town. I don't know why. You're probably not looking for a Jamaican team, uh, but you might be. Uh, but anyway, they're not loaded either. So uh, not sure if that answers your question on them, but uh, just lack of data. If we take a look, uh, we are here at the 1st of November. So we are six in the table, uh, 28 points, a plus 11 goal differential. We've been doing okay. I mean, we're not a dominant side. Remember, we just won the double last year. And, you know, this is our first year in League Two, so I think we're doing well. So we're sitting on 28. We're 19 points clear of relegation. So I, th I feel fine saying that we're going to avoid relegation. Never say never, I guess. How many... How many games do we play here? Oh, God, it's one of those championship seasons... 46 games. So we're only a third of the way through the season. A lot could happen, I guess. But that is where we are there. Finances, we are 700,000 in the hole. We have lost 45,000 this year. We looked at a couple of episodes back. We finally got the finances under control. Those had gone up uh, due to 
automatic co uh, contract increases from promotion and annual increases, which I try to weed those out. Uh, but the promotion, there's really not a lot you can do, uh, even limiting it from 30% to 20%. Yeah, a 20% pay hike is an awful lot when you're not getting any more fans and the, the algorithm of the game doesn't draw any more interest. Uh, dynamics. We have good cohesion, good atmosphere, excellent leadership. And as we also mentioned, uh, Williams has moved into a, a team leader role with the recent departure of former club captain Ireland, our winger. And that brings Carmichael, Hugel, Humphreys, and Tierney into the highly influential players. And everybody loves me, as it should be. Uh, by the way, what did you guys think of... Uh, Two episodes back, that goalkeeping performance. I, I tell you, I still think that is the greatest goalkeeper performance I have ever seen in Football Manager. Let me get the Doncaster game played. I will be right back with those highlights, and then we'll open FA Cup with the match in today's episode. So we went with a little bit of rotation, and uh, it kind of cost us. Kind of cost us, gave, uh, gave our opponent here, Doncaster, Don a little bit of an advantage. But Williams from the edge of the box. And that is a huge finish. And then it's Hugel getting beat. One of our subs, Mol Malloy, puts it in, rounds Humphreys. And that equalized in the 69th minute. Clearance from the back line. They've got a three-on-three -three break, but it's Tierney caught out of position, and I think Humphrey should have done a better job there. But that would be the game winner. Doncaster 2, Tiverton 1, and that gives us a loss. And you can see we have dropped three of our last five games uh, not looking good. So... <laughs> I'm not sure how we're going to fix that, or you know if we can fix that, but we do have Carlisle. Let's get to that, and then uh, well, we played Brentford. By the way, uh, today uh, I'm recording this on Friday. Uh, I did uh, watch the uh, Brentford-Arsenal match today, kickoff um, of the Premier League season. Brentford looked really good. I think Arsenal fans have some things to be concerned about. <laughs> and uh, that will be uh, interesting to see how that plays out. Ben White, $70 million. I love Ben White personally. I think he's a great player. Of course, he was on loan with Leeds in the championship two seasons ago. And... You know, I can't say enough good things about him. He's got a brilliant long ball uh, that he can play on diagonals from the back line out to the wingers. And it's just, um, I really wish he would have been able to stay at Leeds. I wish we would have had a buy option. I wish uh, I wish they would have taken the the offer that we made them two years ago at the end of that season. Uh, but $70 million, and he's just one of those players. Is he worth $70 million today? No, he's not. Um, I don't think Messi's worth, I don't think Kane's worth $150 million. That's just me. Uh, I think those transfer fees are, are way out of control, but uh, I just don't see, you know, but he's one, you know, being English, Add, you know, doubles your value basically. So they bought him for 70, and that would have made, you know, a $35 million bid probably realistic for him, uh, being what it is. But, you know, that's just one of those quirks of the, uh, of the, of the game in England, in the Premier League, particularly where you've got to overpay, uh, for their birth certificate to say England on it. Um, and I guess that's for, you know, in the in the league itself, it doesn't seem to be that big of a deal. I think it comes more into play with Champions League and roster requirements. But, you know, 
Also, what do you guys think? I'd be interested to hear your feedback. So at the beginning of the uh, Brentford Arsenal match today, uh, they were talking about uh, UEFA is talking about doing away with financial fair play. And what they're going to do is incorporate a more American structure with a salary cap and a luxury tax. So if you're not familiar with how that works, we'll talk about it during the video. Let's go with Humphreys in goal. Uh, more Byron will be back from his vacation. He was uh, he needed a rest. Uh, Taylor, Tierney, and Hemmings uh, in the mid. Ellis and Bryant uh, in the midfield. Porter out on the wing. And Scovby in for the injured Carmichael. John Bliss is still out for four months. Uh, so just about the rest of the season, and we'll have Mudge and Williams up top. You know what? I think this is a FA Cup. Let's go ahead and give Lee a start, and I'm going to put Bakar Suma on the bench. Actually, let's give him a let's give him a start today. So the way that uh, this is kind of my, this salary cap and um luxury taxes is mirrored along the lines of major league baseball and the nba and what they want what they do is they this came about to limit teams like the new york yankees from just spending 10 times more than anybody else and it would be very similar to try and limit man, the man cities uh, of the world uh, from just, you know, and, and it's not going to be based on what they're going to do is, from what I was hearing, they're going to look at your team revenue, what you bring in as a club, and I guess that'll be across all walks, match day, tickets, TV rights, game day, television, fees, um, you know, you know, kit sales, what have you, you know, so, and you'll be capped at, you know, the estimate that they gave was roughly 70%. So if you have, if you bring in a hundred million dollars a year, then you can spend $70 million a year on player salaries. Um, and what that's going to do is probably it would open up the books a little more because that would have to be public information. And so you would know how much exactly a player makes per week, per month, per year, whatever. And now it wouldn't stop them from spending it, but the way it would work and the, the way it kind of works in, in, in the American leagues. So let's say you have that 70 million salary cap. But you spend eighty million. You can do that. There's nothing that's going to stop a club from doing that. We're not looking good. No highlights. We 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 don't even have the shots, and we knew that was kind of happening because we are a league lower than Carlisle. Um. Yeah, they've been the better side. Uh, let's pump the fist, hand on hips. Yeah, let's just try to keep them motivated. All right, let's encourage them again. So, let's say you spend that eighty million, and the cap is seventy million, right? I want to make a sub here. Then you could do that, and then you would pay a tax, a certain percentage of every dollar. In this case, ten million dollars. So that may be, let's just say a million dollar tax, a fine. So you would have to, you would pay the 10 million in additional wages, but then you would also pay a million dollar fine. And again, that's, I don't know if that's what the fine would be, the tax, call it what you want, but that would go into a pool, a pool of money. And then, you know, and then if you, you know, but it would be a percentage. But then if you spent, say, $100 million, $30 million over, maybe that would be a $5 million fine or tax. 
which would be paid to the Premier League, go into this pot. And then what should happen is that money at the end of the season, let's say it comes out to $50 million. That $50 million would be split among all the clubs that were at or below the maximum wage bill that were not penalized during the season. So, you know, so like, let's say, let's say Leeds, who I pull, for, who I root for, let's say they've got a $70 million cap, but they're only at $50 million or $45 million or whatever. At the end of the year, there's $50 million and they're one of five teams that are not taxed. Well, that $50 million divided by five teams, so Leeds would pick up an extra $10 million. So that's kind of how that would work. Um, it 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 does work, but then on the flip side, what American sports had to do, especially in baseball, is they also had to put in a salary floor. <laughs> After they did the salary cap, there were uh, there were owners that would just they would sell everybody, trade all their players that were making anything above the league minimum. Uh, the Minnesota Twins uh, were, were notorious for doing this. Uh, the Florida Marlins have done it several times. Uh, anyway, I need to make a sub. Let's. Uh, he's not looking good. Let's bring in Frost for him. Bryant's on a yellow. I'll bring Porter back there. And let's bring on McCarthy. And so what these owners did is they just they pay they they had all young players, rookies, that was horrible. And it's I think that was Bakar Suma, who's gonna be coming off. Oh well. He was a good player for us last year. I mean, he was one of the reasons we got promoted, but he's not one of our guys. Frost is actually the guy that needs to be in there. But I think it was more Byron that got beaten on that one. Uh, Suma was there, but that didn't help. So anyway, just curious what you guys think about the, the salary cap situation. All right, Porter is tired. I don't know if I've got anybody to bring in in the mid. I don't think I do. It's, with Bliss being out, I'm just really thin in that midfield. Let's bring in a Doyle up top. Actually, actually, isn't it Parkins? Parkins is the youngster. Yeah. Let's bring in Parkins and give him a match. You know, we'd like to get past this first round, but it, it wasn't a great draw for us. Let's demand more. Yeah, more Byron. Yeah, we've got a couple of guys just playing really crap today. I just realized the uh, the gas cartridge. Oh, Perkins is through. It's through to Williams. He slots it home. His 22nd of the season. There's an equalizer in the 90th minute. Oh, my. And you know what? I'm going to drop to balanced. I don't know if we do a replay here. More Byron. Good ball through. Oh my God, can we steal one? It's Williams. Crossed over. No, nobody's there. Porter chases it back. Ellis could not find an outlet. We play it all the way back to the keeper. And we go route one. Oh, that's not good. Alves splits our midfield. And sends it up into the stands. Oh my, we are really tired here. And that's full time, so I guess there is a replay? Well, you know what? We're going to keep them motivated. And I bet that, I bet we replay this right away. Yep, so we'll be back to play them. Yeah, because we're at 22 minutes. I want to go ahead and end it. We'll come back for, uh, let me do... God, do I want to come back that quick? 
I tell you what, we'll do. I'll just come back for the FA Cup highlights, and then we'll play Wimbledon in the next episode. So let's do that. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and again, let me know in the comments. Uh, you know, is Arsenal in trouble this year? And let's discuss the uh, the possibility of this this salary cap and uh, luxury tax or penalty system, whatever they call it. Uh, so I'm interested to see what you guys think. Have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye.